Hi there, this is GCSE Physics and this one is Vectors and Scalars. So the objectives are to recall different types of vectors and scalars, describe the difference between displacement and distance, and add component vectors to find a resultant vector using scale drawings. So let's make a start. So all physical quantities, so for example, speed, force, mass, displacement, distance, etc. are all described by a magnitude and a unit. So a magnitude really, you might have heard this word before, but magnitude just means size. Like that's what you might have heard it in geography, you know, magnitude of an earthquake. It just means the size. So 20 miles per hour or 10 newtons or 5 meters per second squared. It's just the... That's just the magnitude, the size of the number, and the unit, the corresponding unit, so meters per second, newton, etc. Vectors, they also must have direction specified, so they've got to have a, a direction, so it might be a velocity is 10 meters per second north, or 20 newtons to the right. They've got to have some kind of, of direction as well, as well as the magnitude and unit. So here's some examples. Um which we'll look at in a minute. Scalars, they don't need direction, so they're just magnitude and unit. And there's some examples below. So what you should do is, you know, pause the video, spend a bit of time, write them down, try and remember them, and then we're going to go on the next page and and basically go through some, some scalars and vectors that you need to remember. So if you want to have a go at this, you can pause the video, you can attempt it, and then I'm going to go through the answers anyway. So energy, is energy a scalar or vector? Energy is a scalar, so I'll just put an S. Now what you can think about if you're struggling is just to think, you know, so if you've written energy before in a lesson or a mass or a weight or an area, has it ever needed direction specified? So if you have ask yourself that question, you should be able to figure it out anyway. So length, scalar or vector, length is just a scalar as well. Temperature, that's just a scalar. Mass is the same. Weight, so if you think about weight, weight needs direction, it always acts down, you know, down towards the center of the earth. So weight is a vector. Area, you know, in a maths lesson, you've never said, you know, an area, the answer is two meters squared and then I had to say due east. So that one's a scalar as well. Speed's a scalar. Volume is a scalar. Time's a scalar. Velocity, velocity must have direction specified. But so it's basically speed with direction. So that one's a vector. And acceleration, you know, acceleration's a vector. Obviously, it's important which way you're accelerating. Because if you get, if you accelerate in one direction, you could be speeding up. Accelerate in another direction, slowing down or decelerating. So that one's a vector as well. So displacement is a vector quantity that describes distance moved in a particular direction. So I'm going to give an example. So let's let's say that we start here at a point A. And maybe we go, let's take this route. So from there, and then down this way. Let's just make some distances up. Let's say this one's 200, meter, uh, 200 meters, could be completely wrong. And let's say this one is 150 meters. So the total distance traveled would be obviously those two added together. So the total distance is, is it's a 300 and 50 meters so that's the distance that one's okay now the displacement vector is from the original position a to our new position b in a in a straight line you know as the crow flies straight line from a to b you know, so the displacement which i call s might be you know, this one might be 120 meters and that's the magnitude and the unit, but obviously we need a direction specified. You know, you could say uh, that it's, it's due east, for example. But a lot of the time, it's you could use an angle. So, you, and you can measure them from north, for example. Obviously, I'm not going to do this one precisely. But, you know, if you measure this angle, it might be, you know, 80 degrees. So we could say displacement of 120 meters, uh, an angle of 80 degrees from north. Or you could do a three-figure bearing and say... You know, zero eight zero degrees, something like that. 
So displacement's a vector, distance is a scalar. Distance, you just add them up. Displacement is a straight line vector, in this instance, from point A to point B. All right, let's move on. So how do we represent vectors? It's quite straightforward. So we use an arrowed straight line. So an example might be this one. So displacement 50 meters east. The arrow indicates the direction and the length of the line is proportional to the magnitude. So if we were to have a 100 meter line, you'd anticipate that it'd be double the length of the 50 meter line. You don't always need to do that unless, unless we're doing a, a scale drawing, which for the more complex ones, you know, questions at GCC you will be doing. So this one's 25 meters, 45 degrees north of east. Or you could do the bearing again from north. Measure the angle. Depends on the question though. Let's move on. So addition of vectors. There's a couple of things with this one. So what do you think might happen here? So we've got an object. There's two forces acting on it. A 4 Newton and a 6 Newton. They're acting in the same direction. So logically it makes sense that we just add them together. So that'd be 10 newtons. Now, the names of some of these vectors are quite important. The original vectors, these, these first ones, the four and the six, they're known as component vectors. And when you add the component vectors together, the, the final overall vector is called the resultant vector. I'd probably make some notes on this. Remember, if you want to take notes at any time, just obviously just pause the video. So what about an instance like this? We've got six newtons to the right, four newtons to the left. So opposite direction. So we can subtract these. So the resultant is the two newton. And remember that the, the four and the six newton vector that are acting opposite directions, they're called the component vectors. The final vector is the resultant vector. So about two vectors at an angle to each other. So you might get something like this. So we've got a three newton and a four newton. So the first thing that we could do is to redraw them like this. So this part of the vector, the green bit there, is, is the tail of the vector, and this bit would be the nose for both of them. It's it's good to redraw vector diagrams like this so that they are tail to nose, tail to nose. And then the, the resultant vector is the, the distance, you know, straight line from the from the origin A to the final point B, which in this case will give us a right angle triangle. Now, if you're good at maths, you could calculate, calculate that using Pythagoras. You know, it could be four squared plus three squared, 25, and then square root 25 gives you five newtons. Um, and then you could figure out an angle using trigonometry. However, sometimes at GCC, or a lot of the time at GCC, they want you to actually do a scale drawing. So what I would like you to do is to draw, so you could do a scale of one newton to, is one centimeter. And draw a, just practice this, draw a four centimetre line. Now you're going to need a ruler uh, and a, th a three centimetre line downwards, like this. And then measure this line. So when you measure that line, the resultant vector, you should get a, a five centimetre line if you just want to try that. So maybe pause it and have a go. And then what you can also do is, if you've got a protractor, is to measure this angle. This angle, the symbol, I'm just going to use theta. It's not the neatest, but that's the angle. So by scale drawing, you could actually do the four, new, uh, four centimeter cross up, which is four newton, three centimeter down, measure the resultant vector using a, using a ruler and get the five centimeters. So on this one, you don't need to do the calculation. You can do Pythagoras if you wish. So in this one, I want you to, I want you to pause the video, I want you to redraw it, uh, and I want you to calculate the the resultant vector using a scale drawing. So it should be pretty straightforward. So let's have a look. So we've got six newton to the left. I would, I would have probably done six centimeters. You know, it's six and four centimeters is okay. So six centimeters to the left, four centimeters down. So I've redrawn it tail to nose, tail to nose. And then the resultant, which if you measure, measure with really should get uh, 7.2 centimeters. And the 7.2 centimetres obviously correlates to a, a 7.2 newton, newton vector. If you've got 7.47, 7, you know, around that area, in an examination, you will be allowed a range of values. So, you know, this one might be anything between 6.8, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9
all the way to 7.4 newtons. But try to be as accurate as possible. And the angle, if you have a, you know, if, if you want to, if it asks you to measure the angle, if you've got a protractor, that angle you should have gone approximately 34 degrees. Let's have a go at this one. Again, you can verify with calculation if you wish, but I want you to attempt it using, using a scale drawing. So pause the video, have a go at it. And remember to draw a triangle, calculate the resultant vector, and then uh, get an angle using your protractor. So we've got a, a raindrop falling at a constant velocity of 5.8 meters per second, and we've got a horizontal wind of 3.4 meters per second. And to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant velocity of the raindrop via scale diagram. So obviously mine's not going to be to scale, um, but, but yours will as it will be on paper with a ruler. So horizontal wind of 3.4. So you might have a one centimeter to one meter per second. So that'll be 3.4 centimeters or 3.4 meters per second. And then down are 5.8 meters per second. So you should have maybe a 5.8 centimeter line. Now, if you were uh, join this triangle up for this resultant vector, remember the original ones are called the components, and the you know the one that we've just drawn in is the resultant vector. So, if we measure this, we should get approximately six point seven centimeters or six point seven meters per second. Now, again, remember you know if you scored well scored if you measured between say maybe six point four to seven meters per second that should be okay too you will always get a range of values so 6.7 is you know as accurate as it's going to get and then the angle you could get this angle from the horizontal and if you measure that with, if you haven't done that if you want to do it now on your, on your diagram measure it protractor that, that you should get should get approximately 60 degrees so approximately equal to 60 degrees I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.